This interactive simulation demonstrates how pressure and temperature influence chemical potential, mostly for a single component. The simulation is really based on just one equation, but it's an important one. It's the change in the Gibbs free energy for a single component is related to volume, pressure, entropy, and temperature. And for a single component, the Gibbs free energy is the same as the chemical potential. For example, if temperature is constant, so this term is zero, then we expect Gibbs free energy to increase with pressure and increase more for something that has a larger volume. So on the plot on the right, we see solid water, which has a larger volume per mole than liquid water, therefore its chemical potential is increasing more with pressure. And then the same type of reasoning, if instead we look at constant pressure, so plot on the left, this term then goes to zero, the chemical potential decreases since the entropy is positive, and entropy is bigger for the liquid than the solid, so we see a larger decrease in chemical potential. So the simulation is set up so that you can look at two plots next to each other. Notice there is a multiplying factor, in this case times 1500, because the chemical potential change is different for, for liquids, gases, and we'll look at that in more detail when we go to the actual simulation. And so the drop-down menus here allow us to pick solid liquid, solid vapor or gas, and liquid gas equilibrium. All of these are for water. In addition, we have solid liquid equilibrium for ethanol because ethanol shows different behavior. Solid ethanol is more dense than liquid ethanol. Solid water is less dense than liquid water. The simulation also allows us to show whether the conditions we're looking at are above or below the triple point. For example, if we look at solid liquid equilibrium, and this says the temperature is below the triple point temperature. The easiest way to understand that is to look at a temperature pressure diagram. So this is a pressure temperature diagram for water, triple point is here. This line slopes slightly negative. If we're changing the pressure and looking at equilibrium between solid and liquid, we need to be at a temperature lower than this triple temperature because if we were at a higher temperature, we'd have vapor liquid equilibrium as opposed to solid liquid equilibrium. Same logic for the other conditions. So a very important thing to point out about these plots is the chemical potential as a function of temperature is shown linear on this plot. And likewise, the function of pressure is shown linear. But we're looking at a very narrow pressure range. Just we expand it to make it clear what we're interested in is that phase transition. And so the fact that we draw these linears because, for example, we only are covering a few degrees in temperature, and so on that scale they look linear. The other thing that's important to note is that the solid lines represent the stable phase. So this, this condition, solid water is stable. This condition, liquid water is stable. The lower chemical potential is the stable phase. This is important. Lower chemical potential is the stable phase. And then the melting point, of course, is where the phase transition takes place. So there's two other options to look at. On chemical potential versus temperature diagram, I can change the pressure with the slider and it will change these curves based on how chemical potential changes the pressure. Likewise, on the right, I can change the temperature with this slider and it will change how these curves change. 
Again, over small ranges, just to give an idea of the behavior. The final thing is we can check this box that says add salt. And for the simulations where we have liquid water, we add salt, it's going to change the equilibrium. And the, when we look at the interactive simulation, we'll, we'll see what behavior takes place. So here we're looking at the interactive simulation. Let's look at the chemical potential versus temperature plot on the left. As I change the pressure, so let me increase the pressure. You notice the chemical potential is increased on this, on this scale. We, we're not talking about large changes. We purposely don't have an actual scale. We just want to demonstrate the general behavior. So we have options to pick, for example, solid vapor. And notice the rather dramatic difference in slope between the solid and the vapor, and this is because vapor has much larger volume than solid. And over here, we could look at liquid vapor as a function of temperature. Again, at high temperature, vapor is a stable phase. At low temperature, liquid is a stable phase. So let's look at two plots. Let's look at solid liquid versus temperature. And then let's look at liquid vapor versus temperature. And let's look at the effect of adding salt. So if we check this box, the black line now, corresponds to the chemical potential of water in a salt solution. So the chemical potential is lower because the mole fraction of water is lower than in pure water. And so notice that on the left, if we add salt, and again, the solid lines are the stable phase, we've lowered the melting point. Just looking at the chemical potential plot, the intersection between solid and the salt solution, we've lowered the melting point. Whereas on the chemical potential for liquid vapor equilibrium, we've raised the boiling point. Just from the chemical potential plots, we can quickly see the type of behavior effect of adding salt to a solution. So the idea is we can compare different conditions to get a better understanding of chemical potential and phase equilibrium, mostly in this case for a single component.